I was walking by the Cummins diesel booth and there was this gravity well <laughs> over here and I had to check it out. I'm here with Steve and he's gonna talk to us about their new crate motor program. And I've been hearing about this program in the community for months. Yeah. And uh, I was thinking about it. I was I was towing a U-Haul trailer coming up a grade in the FJ80. I may have passed you, I don't know. I, you probably, <laughs> <laughs> if you had one of these. Yeah. I did. Uh, but we got six miles to the gallon. <laughs> uh, over 130 miles, we burned in a complete tank of gas. T oh. Tell us about the performance and tell us a little bit about this about this program yeah, yeah. And, and what you guys got going on. Well, so uh, a few years ago, we really started to put our feelers out there to this market, yeah. kind of the boutique 4x4 market, because we knew people were having this issue. You have these iconic vehicles no one wants to get rid of, but the drive lines are worn out or they never were really that good to begin with for what we had offered here in the stateside. Mm -hmm. So what's the rest of the world doing? Turbo diesel, Turbo right? Diesels. And we couldn't yep. ever get it here for some reason. Well, what we learned was uh, through the SEMA network how we could legally do that. So we took some products that we had, uh, product families that existed, and we tailored them for this market. And we've now launched Cummins Repower, which is our crate engine division. Mm -hmm. So the first engine is this R2.8 turbo diesel, which is exactly kind of what yeah. you need. Right. Um, Can we kind of wander yeah, over absolutely. here at the same time and take a look at the engine? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So. This is a four cylinder 2.8 liter displacement turbo diesel, high pressure common rail. So like all the modern stuff that makes a diesel a bit more reliable. Mm -hmm. um, it is uh, emissions compliant up to about model year 1999 for gas to diesel swaps. Okay. Uh, so those were our targets to hit with this first launch. So at the Toyota uh, Land Cruiser FJ80, mm -hmm. possible? Yeah, possible. All right. Uh, so we wanted to you know, look at all these things that your installations would uh, require that you guys would really like. I'm an enthusiast, so I kind of uh -huh. already know what I would want in a crate engine from us. So we're providing a 120 amp alternator a ZF power steering pump, uh, oil cooler with a remote oil filter set up so you can put that wherever works best for you. Uh, we have a vacuum pump, so yep. for those doing gas to diesel conversions, you don't have to run full hydro boost. So you've got a cam driven vacuum pump um, and grid heater and all that good stuff. So uh, it's, it's really a turnkey package and what makes it turnkey is what we're offering for the harness. Okay. So not only are you getting the engine and the belt driven uh, accessories and all that good stuff, but you're also getting your in cab and under hood wiring harness. You're getting a throttle pedal with it, a firewall bulk hit fitting, and a Murphy PV25 can display for your dash. So like okay. any of the stuff we're broadcasting, yep. uh, whether none of your gauges work or not, yep. like you at least have this lifeline to what is your engine doing. Right. Like what battery voltage, temp, RPM, all that good stuff. Uh, so, and in terms of its size, I mm -hmm. mean, you you just rolled out the program. You said that the first twenty five are out there. Yeah, first twenty five okay. are out there. Uh -huh. uh, the very first one of those is over at Anything Scout in a nineteen sixty seven Scout two uh, eight hundred, and it, really nice builds. Check that out. Okay. Um, the next hundred or so, this next class comes out next month, okay. and then full production uh, early fall. Okay. So, so uh, if somebody wants to get their hands on one of these, what is our wait time going to be? Um, the best thing to do right now is go to CumminsRepower.com. Yep. Sign up. That list goes to me. Yep. Um, you can kind of rank. Do you need it now, or are you more interested later on? So, which quarter, etc. Um, for the full production, mm -hmm. September. If you're not yep. on that first. Right. Uh, round is, is okay. a good target. Okay. Once the program is fully up and running, wait time will be however long it takes to ship out of either Columbus, Indiana or Memphis, Tennessee. Got it. So we'll have stock all over the U.S. of these things. Great. Hey, can we uh, take a look at this engine in a... Absolutely. Let's, let's walk over and do that. Let's take a look. Yeah. Get that turbo whistle. A model year 2000 Jeep Wrangler. This is our yep. emissions certification vehicle. Uh, Brittany and I drove this down from Grand Junction, and uh, this is um, the one we actually put in chassis dynos and we get these uh, certifications with. Mm -hmm. This one, uh, 
For the EPA FTP 75 drive cycle, we're at 31 on the highway and 25 for in town. So that's better than the six ounce. A little out, better, yeah. <laughs> this thing, I think we're around 5,200 pounds with all the gear in the back. And Brittany uh -huh. and I driving down from Grand Junction, including uh, a couple off road excursions, uh, we were 25, 24 miles per gallon average. Wow. Um, anything Scout in their 800 with their brand new engine was 25. So really happy with the fuel economy. And where it really makes a difference is the low end torque. So that's right. Like our torque curve on this, you're 267 foot pounds from 1500 RPM to 3000 flat. Wow. So if you think about your cruising speed yep. where you're pulling that trailer, you would have been at peak torque the whole time and yep. it would have been fine. Yep. Um, so it, that's the difference for people who aren't familiar with diesel is that well, low end torque. And you know, we have 161 horsepower, kind of irrelevant if you have that low end torque. So before you, kind of knock the numbers or you're scared of the numbers, yep. you got to drive it first. No, it's absolutely. It's a whole different experience. You know, I, um, before we started rolling, I, I was telling you, I go down to Australia from time to time and they all run, you know, lower cubic inch, um, torquey turbo diesels that get great gas mileage and it's awesome to see this come yeah, from the United States. It's you great. know, in America, there's the whole no replacement for displacement. <laughs> I've but, never heard that before. Yeah, this, this, you know, turbo yeah. diesels kind of buck that. It's how no, much it's air absolutely. can you push through this engine. Yeah. And this base family, you know, for example, on Brazil, to talk about other parts of the world, yep. in Brazil, Ford runs this family and their F-Series. So their F-350 and F-4000 Super Duty trucks has our 2.8 liter in it. And here, that would just boggle the mind. Like, you know, yeah. we have 6.7 liters in Fords here. Right. Uh, so, but it's completely different. And and for this kind of boutique 4x4 market, space is a premium. And mm -hmm. we have other things we want to run under the hood. And we have auxiliary air compressors or extra batteries. Or uh, if you're really cool, you have welders and stuff like that under mm -hmm. the hood. Uh, but space is a premium, and you don't want to be heavy either. So 500 pounds is uh, roughly the weight of this. So. It, your stock suspension won't know the difference in most cases. And when you're off-road, when your you're tires off-road, are oh, not yeah. going to stop turning. It is, yeah. yeah. So we had this one as well as a white one at Easter Jeep Safari this year, and we just idled over everything. It was <laughs> absolutely crazy. So this thing, since it's our emissions vehicle, we can't lock it and we can't change the gearing. So 373s with open diffs, and we were on Hell's Revenge, and we were, yeah. you know, we did everything yeah. uh, that any of the the big boy Jeeps could do, uh, just by not spinning wheels yeah. you know just letting it hit the low speed governor you know both feet on the floor pan and let it walk up and over everything so really a cool experience uh, it's taken a while to get here but we're we're thrilled to be here and, and you're doing it they're out there now yeah that's awesome. and the overland community we started at overland expo east two years ago mm -hmm. and that's where we really have started to collect the feedback the overland expo east last year and now this is our first west but most of the feedback that got us to this, what we would call a shop order of an engine, came from this community, and it's it's all been great. It's well, Steve, thank you not, not a only problem. For, for taking the time, but also for bringing these engines oh, to uh, North America. It's absolutely my pleasure, trust yeah, me. Like, <laughs> Labor of love, yeah. without a doubt. Thank you, thank you.